All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to trigger all of these uh, support conversations that I can't do from the menu. I have to just wander to a specific spot. Professor. Yeah, now's a good time, Annette. What do you got? I'm so sorry, Professor. I somehow overslept and missed our training session. I didn't mean to cause you and the others so much trouble. It's Imagine probably not a big deal. Missions, it really is inexcusable. Uh, you need to rest more. It's just, when I'm studying tactics, I lose track of time and... Oh, who am I kidding? I've always been like this. Before I came to the Officers Academy, I was a student at the School of Sorcery in Ferdiad. Even back then I was pulling all-nighters well before the exams. And I never even noticed I was harming myself. I'm just too focused on my goal. So you should rest more. I already told you this, but I really love to learn new things. It's a passion of sorts. I first realized I had the learning bug when I was about four or five years old. My father was so happy to see me using magic. At five years happy old? He made me happy too. And that made me want to work even harder. If only things could have stayed like that. Well, what do you mean, Annette? When I was about 13, my father left home. He was a devout man, so I figured he'd gone to the monastery. That's why I went to the School of Sorcery, so that I could eventually get accepted at the Officers' Academy. I studied harder than ever, and sure enough, I finally earned a referral. Unfortunately, my passion for learning became more of an obsession. I got so focused, I kind of forgot how to relax. Feels like I've been running in circles ever since. Oh, uh, rest is just as important as work. Take it from me. That's true. Just look at today. If my hard work stops me from working hard, what good is it? Okay, it's decided. From now on, I'll try my best not to try my best. Um, you have my support, Annette. Yay! With you on my side, I'm sure I'll succeed. From now on, just, uh... you see me going overboard? Just let me know. I'm a new woman, after all. Sure. Alright, um... There we go. There's those other pop-ups that I've been looking for. Professor. See, Sedith. Uh, we've seen this before. Ah, there you are. So I'm just going to skip it. That's the one where uh, he interviews Byleth, and just uh, doesn't doesn't give Sedith any new information. Professor. All right. But this one is new. You're certainly not going easy on me. You fight like a mercenary, not a knight. You hunger for victory, pure and simple. You may not be aware of it yourself, but I see it. Uh, should I take that as a compliment? Indeed. Okay, then. Knights ought to have some hunger. I've always thought so. They depend too much on their swords. Only when they're rested away do knights consider their hands and feet as weapons. That's not how it was for warriors of old. They weren't limited by their tools. Victory is what matters, not the method of achieving it. That's the attitude to adopt. I detect that in your style. It is plain to see. Mm, yeah, that doesn't seem like the highest of praise. You may take it however you like. I believe the difference between us lies within that hunger. But where does it come from? From the start, I was aiming to win. Yet I couldn't defeat you. Then I remembered something you said before. Uh, oh yeah, about your aspirations? Indeed. I was raised to value strength above all else. Whereas you had a reason, an ambition, pushing you toward that hunger. So tell me, what was the reason 
Why were you driven to become so strong? A mercenary, dude. I do it to survive. That's a mercenary's answer, to be sure. So that is the source of your hunger. I suppose I must find my own. Well, uh, I'll help you. Maybe. Uh, if we're to get along, I think not. I'll be content if you continue to train with me. Perhaps it will come to me as I swing my sword. Well, maybe. All right, uh, who's next? I swear there is another pop up. All right, Ingrid, how's it going? Letters are only creating more rubbish in the world. Professor? Oh, I didn't see you standing there. My apologies. Now, is that a letter you were throwing away? Oh, uh, that paper. Well, I. Yes. Yes, it was. It was a letter from my father. Well, shouldn't it be important then? I understand where you're coming from here. But I have no need of such things. It isn't like anything of importance was written on it. Curious? I suppose there's no harm in allowing you to read it. Go on, then. My dearest daughter, Ingrid. Are you well? I trust that you are behaving yourself and refraining from causing trouble for others. Things on the home front are in order. A marriage proposal for you and the Viscount's son should be prepared soon. Although... I'm quite certain there are many superior candidates at Garrig Mock Monastery. As you know, the very survival of our family is dependent upon whom you marry. You are the only one left in the family who can make things right. We are all counting on you. Do not lose sight of what truly matters. Hmm, a letter about marriage prospects, yes. huh? Perhaps you found it somewhat entertaining. Not really. We've never been very well off financially. My noble family, House Galatea, branched off from House Daphnel in the Alliance. Shortly after, we were lucky enough to receive the support of the royal family, allowing us to attain nobility to some extent. But the territory we watch over is poor. Oh. It's harvest meager. And our noble blood, oh. too, has grown thin. Shoot. Neither my father nor my brother That's awkward. Oppressed. I, however, do bear a crest. Because of this, my father sees me as our family's one hope for the future. A crest is highly prized among nobles. Were I to marry into a greater noble family, that financial support right, could soon um... grow Accidentally unplugged my uh, Ethernet cable. I should have reacted sooner to... Uh, to pausing it. But whatever, the recording is fine. That didn't get interrupted. Uh, we're back live. Uh, can't believe he would use you like that. That's, uh... Thank you, Professor. Not Your cool. Your sentiment alone is a great comfort to me. Despite my own feelings, I understand his approach to all this. It isn't that he doesn't care for me. I understand it very, very well, which is why I... I apologize, Professor. I must be going. All right, come on, computer. All right. Connection should be more or less stable, but uh, although it says I'm disconnected from chat, which is kind of annoying. Hold on, I know I've got another support. Ah! Yeah, here we go. We didn't get to see Welcome Byleth and Rhea before, did we? This is the first time I have welcomed you here, is it not? <laughs> there is no need to be nervous. Please, come closer. When you speak with me here in this room, you are not speaking with the Archbishop, but with Rhea. 
It's just me. No, oh, I'm still nervous. Using my meta knowledge from the previous playthrough, I know that A, she's a, a big old dragon in disguise. And also, she performed what seems like it would be a profane ritual. Putting a press stone in my heart. What a sweet child you are. Oh, my apologies. I should not be treating you like a child. As Gerald's kin, somehow you don't seem at all a stranger to me. Speaking of Gerald, may I ask if he ever spoke of me to you? Not a word. Oh dear, how heartless of him. In any case, let us endeavor to become closer from here on out. <laughs> Since you are here, shall I tell you about the Gerald that I knew? By the look of it, you haven't heard much about his time at the monastery, have you? When I first met Gerald, he was quite young. Why, he could not even grow a full beard at that point. On one fateful occasion, the band of mercenaries he belonged to fought alongside the Knights of Saros. I was traveling with the Knights at the time, and Gerald jumped in front of an attack meant for me. He was gravely wounded, on the verge of death. I tended to his wounds in a desperate attempt to save his life. Thankfully, my efforts were not in vain. Hmm. Gerald managed to escape a seemingly certain death. I made arrangements for him to receive further care at Garrick Mock. The moment he was deemed fully recovered, I invited him to join the Knights. Uh, oh yeah, he never told me about any of that. Well, it is not a story I have often repeated. Even at the monastery, there are not many who know that. I tell you this because, to me, you are the child of the one who saved my life all those years ago. And also... Yes? Never mind. It is hmm. nothing. I simply wanted to say that I trust you. By coming to visit with me today, you have... Well, suffice it to say that my day is brighter than it otherwise would have been. I thank you for that. Of course, uh, again, using knowledge from a previous playthrough, we know that uh, by tending to Gerald's wounds, uh, she means giving him some kind of blood transfusion in the field. Which, I don't know anything about field medicine, but I feel like that's probably not the place to do it. Today Anywho. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope I'm not bothering you. Looks like you're pretty deep in thought. Does it? I just wanted to stop by and ask. It was your turn to cook last night, yeah? Uh, yes. Well, it was great. I was wondering if you could give me some tips. You know, teach me how to cook. I hear a girl loves a man who can cook. Sylvain. Yeah? You are from Fargus. You must understand how it appears for you to spend time with one from Dusker. To be near me is to invite tedious misunderstanding. Oh, please. I don't care who misunderstands what about me. I talk to who I want. Besides, I believe the Dusker people are innocent. You do? Fargus and Dusker have been friendly since, heck, forever. So why would our old friends from Dusker just up and assassinate our king? It doesn't make sense. Sure, there are probably folks from Dusker who don't like Fargus. But do I think there's enough of them to mount an attack and slaughter the king and his whole company of elite guards? It is difficult to believe considering the discrepancy in skill and number. Right? At most, I can see a misguided group of people from Dusker conspiring with someone else who had plans to dethrone the king. Maybe they were even lured into participating and used as scapegoats. Regardless, it doesn't concern mm. you or the rest of your people. A person can't be judged by the worst of their kind. Or where would any of us be? Besides, people like to talk about me anyway. So, let them talk. 
Okay, you're making a weird face. What did I say? I have misjudged you. I was under the impression you only cared about women. <laughs> well, I'm glad I've cleared up that misunderstanding. But really, there's no way I'm the only person who figured all that out. There must be people who think like me in Ferdiad, including His Highness. Agreed. But whatever the truth, we are still perceived as traitorous assassins. Once a misunderstanding takes hold, it isn't easy to clear the air. Not without solid evidence of the truth. But even if we found evidence that your people are innocent, those negative sentiments wouldn't disappear overnight. The only thing that can change that is time and effort. Depressing, isn't it? Time and effort. Yes, I believe you're right. Man, that got serious. Shouldn't we lighten things up with a nice cooking lesson? Very well. Alright, Sylvain ain't so bad. Uh, Ash and Annette, what are they like? I don't know. Oh, Ash, are you here to study too? I am. It's quiet here. Easier to concentrate. <sighs> it really is. Hey, would you like to study together? We can help each other out if we get stuck. Oh, yes. We'll get a lot more done working together. Uh, hmm. What's the matter, Ash? This question's got me stumped. A ballista inside a castle is ready to fire at enemies outside. What angle should be used for the shot? Assume the ballista is the same as those in Garrig Mach. Ignore the effects of wind. This is for defensive strategy, isn't it? Why is it so complicated? Don't you just aim and fire? Hmm. It may help to focus on maximizing target accuracy to reduce your miss rate. To start, let's sort out the setup. Let's see. Using these ballista specifications, if the ballista corals follow this trajectory, they'll hit the enemy lines, right? Oh, that makes sense. Because the enemy line will be... Man, this is... That's it. Just making okay, me now try using that same technique and think of uh, if the walls are physics classes and the enemy lines are at that distance. Oh, I think I see. I knew you'd get it. Like way back when I was in wow. high school. I didn't expect math of all things to be useful in a siege. This is tough. Numbers are not my strong suit. But this really is the sort of thing you have to know if you want to command troops. That's true. But not everyone is good with numbers. That's why we have tacticians do these calculations for us. Or prepare them before we go to battle. A century ago, the Empire's mathematicians played a huge role in the Battle of the Wall of Fodlan. I had no idea. Hey, you really know what you're doing, Annette. You think so? Definitely. You've obviously done a lot of studying. I really admire that. I suppose I have. Studying is a necessity if you want the advantage over your enemies. <laughs> but necessity aside, it's nice to hear you say that. Seriously, parabolic arts, uh, arcs. <laughs> Launch speeds and angles and... Um... Yeah, okay. We'll do this now. It's not relevant uh, for right now, but we'll do Something it anyway. Troubling you, Ingrid? Oh, Sedith. You seem to have caught me when I thought nobody was around. Perhaps I can help, if you would like to share. I wouldn't want to bother you with my trivialities. I will not pry, of course. But if you keep it to yourself, no one will be able to help you. That's true. It's regarding my father. Count Galatea. I have met him once or twice. Well, you have likely heard that House Galatea's financial situation is precarious. Many regions of Fargus are harsh and infertile, but our lands are especially so. There were several years of fruitless harvest. It nearly ruined us. We could barely feed our troops. Then I was born bearing a crest, after generations bore none. Suddenly my family hung its future on me. My father had hopes that with my crest, I'd be married into a noble family, and that House Galatea's financial troubles would be a thing of the past. Ah, I see. 
and the other house would benefit from the addition of your crest-bearing blood. It seems to me you have suffered much for the misfortune of being born with a crest. I beg your pardon? I know crests are highly valued, but they are also a burden. My feelings are mixed. You truly think so? But you're so devoted to the goddess. I'm surprised to hear you say such a thing. Perhaps one day I will expound upon my opinion of crests in greater detail with you. For now, let it suffice to say that whether or not you bear one is secondary to your identity. You are a person, first and foremost. And you should be permitted to grow as a person, crest or not. I agree. Thank you for listening. If you ever wish to discuss this again, consider me available whenever you please. Thank you so much. See, that's nice. You know, I mean, Sedith is a good guy when it comes down to it. So it's nice to see him in, you know, in a light like that. 